Hari Om all. Welcome to the session. So we'll start the session. Am I am I clear? Hari. Yes, sir. Pranam sir. Okay. So we'll start with the Guru Mantra. Kindly sit in a cross leg posture. Back straight. Palms on the knees. Eyes closed. Keep our mind on Guru's feet and take his blessings. We'll chant Guru Mantra. Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Saksha Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Akanta Mantala Kala, Yaptam Yenacharacharam, Tatpadam darshitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha janamulam guru murti puja mulam guru padam mantra mulam guru vakyam moksha mulam guru kripa moksha mulam guru kripa Less than three times more, have a deep inhalation. Oh. So we have uh, our Swamiji here. So uh, our uh, uh, Ashram is Shiradash Yoga Vidyalaya, headed by uh, our Swamiji's, who are direct disciple of Swami Satyananda Saraswati. So uh, our Swamiji is here to address uh, the session. Hari Om Swamiji. Hari Om. Hari Om everybody. Hari Om Swamiji. Hari Om Swamiji. Hari Om Swamiji. Om Swamiji. Hari Om Swamiji. Hari Om. Swamiji. Hari Om. Swami. Hari Om. 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 I am in Kashi. It is very, 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 very cold. From January, it started uh, heavy cold. And uh, uh, Kashi, we have uh, here ashram for the orphan cows. So we are keeping some cows, uh, abundant cows, uh, non-living cows. And we, do, we do seva here. Same like uh, we have in Pirvanamalai also. We also have in Tirumalai same kind of uh, uh, Gaushala where we keep the orphan cows and do the seva. Uh, uh, Shivadarshan Yoga Vidyale, uh, it, it is in Chulai, established in 1992. One more very uh, important thing I want to tell you, 19 January, this 19 January is my birthday. Rebirth day, you know, Sanyas birthday. 19 January in 83, I have taken the Sanyas. So now I am completing this 19 January 40 years of my Sanyas, sanyas life. Swami Satyananji is my guru. Uh, and Swami Satyananji's 
Guru was Swami Shivananji from Rishikesh. He was FRCS doctor. And uh, as you know that uh, uh, in my opinion that uh, Samadhi, in Samadhi path, there is first shloka Athi Yoga Anushashanam. Second shloka Chitta Vritti Niroda. Swami Satyananji taught us how to do that, how to control your vittis of the mind. That is one uh, path, Karma Yoga. That Swami Shivananji also for, told Swami Satyananji when he was in the ashram and once lecture, he said, Swami Shivananji said, to his sannyasis that you should do more work as much as you can do you you do do the work more concentrate on the work seva so next day he was giving lecture he, uh, next day swami satyananji uh, changed his dress geru into a normal dress took his bag and baggage and went to swami shivananji and swami shivananji said hey satyam where are you going i'm taking your bag and baggage where are you going he said, I am going to my house. There I got the offer for uh, editing and I will do exhaust my karma. As you said, by doing the karma, I will exhaust my karma. Because Swamiji belongs to a very rich family. He was having thousand acres of land, uh, many hundreds of cows, bulls and all everything. So uh, Swami said, I will, I have so much, uh, so much there to do. I can exhaust my karma very fast by doing that uh, seva there. He said, no, Swami Shivananji said, no. If you are going back and you're doing work there, you are accumulating more karmas. So you have to be here and you do guru seva and whatever guru gives the work you have, you should do. Then only you will exhaust your karmas. Swami, Shiva, uh, Swami Satyananji used to work in ashram, uh, Shivananda ashram. Out of 24 hours, he used to sleep for 2-3 hours. So, 20-22 hours, he used to work for Gurudev. Then he, uh, then he was uh, completed his 11-12 uh, years. Then Swami Satyananji said, uh, Swami Shivananji said to Swami Satyananda, you go out in the world and spread the message of yoga door to door and show to show. Then Swamiji went all over the world. He went by bullock cart, he went by walking, he went by train, he went by plane, and but he went touch each and every country and he spread the message of yoga. And finally he came in 1963 to Munger and in 1964 he established the Bihar School of Yoga. So when uh, we joined ashram, we used to do a lot of karma. That, that uh, method Swamiji followed, which Swami Shivananji taught uh, Swami Satyananji, that how to exhaust your karma, how to purify your chitta. So that, uh, that he said, you, you do the... I was uh, very, uh, very educated that time, and uh, the, that time I finished my MSc and went there. Swamiji didn't give me any educate work like we, we, we the, he said, you, you have to do the toilet cleaning, you have to go to the press, do, not printing, not editing, not nothing. He said, wiping uh, the machines, that is your work. So, and kitchen work, early morning, three o'clock in winter, we used to go to the coal peat and uh, take the coal and put it in the fire and make ready six o'clock in the morning, winter season. Uh, breakfast for 200 people. So all sort of work we have done uh, as a seva bhav. So to exhaust the karmas. So uh, he taught, he said not, not uh, uh, just learn the theory. You should be practical. So how to uh, come out of the karmas, how to exhaust your karmas, that is best way is karma yoga. Patanjali has given Ashtang Yoga, Yam Niyam Asan Sadhana Pad, uh, Yam Niyam Asan Pranayam Pratyah Dharana Dhyan Samadhi. Uh, yam Niyam, Swamiji, Swami Satyanji said, Yam Niyams are very, very difficult. It is difficult to follow. 
you cannot speak truth all the time you you cannot you do uh, some uh, physically or mentally uh, violence you cannot avoid that so uh, tapa tapash means it is very difficult to do the tapa like sami shivananji did tapa in ganga water winter also he used to up to west uh, he used to uh, stand in the water and do the sadhana sami satyananji d did the sadhana uh, panchagni tapa he was keeping fire around even in summer vacation he used to keep fire five fires and sitting uh, in the center and doing tapa the, the tapa is very it is not easy to do the tapa so santosh containment we 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 are not we don't get satisfied whatever we get we are, we don't get satisfied we want always more so all the all the i'm, I'm not take, taking one by one everything just in this, uh, something short in i'm telling you that it is very difficult so what swami satyananji said you leave yama and niyama you start asanas there is 84 lakhs asanas and 84 yonis in a incarnations are there if you are perfect yourself in one asana like sub for example if you are bringing per- perfection in uh, uh vrishik asana or you are per- perfecting yourself in marjari asana that incarnation that you, that birth you don't have to take so you you can get rid of that birth you can pass that birth and you go to the next birth so uh, asana is not for a uh, reason what uh, we think asana is for uh, also for uh, going uh, upwards to higher con- lower consciousness to higher consciousness so asana and you do pranayama controlling the mind controlling the uh, breath then uh, you go slowly into the samadhi stage but swami shiva swami swami patanjali 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 said yam niyam asan pranayam the first stage satyanand said is asana then once you reach to the stage of the samadhi mind is so purified that you can follow the yam niyam easily so swami satyanand ji used to keep uh, asan pranayam pratyadharana dhyan samadhi yama niyama then you can follow easily yama niyama when you are my mind is purified and uplifted so but swami shivanand ji said after that also eight steps are there that that the, those eight steps are this uh, uh, this you should do uh, save give love sir purify meditate be so uh, give you try to give not only to uh, our own people but others if you have for example one uh, small example i give you for, for give the one there was one king who was very generous very kind very uh, uh, very polite to the people and he was doing lot of work for his people and uh, there was another king who was very cruel and very uh, always want to expand his uh, kingdom so he what he did that uh, king uh, uh, invaded in in this uh, in this uh, he, his uh, kingdom so he was he was having very big uh, army so this uh, this uh, uh, king who was very uh, polite he was having very very small army so he he uh, he quietly ran away from there and handed over his kingdom to that person and came out of the kingdom and he was going uh, going uh, going and going and village to village and he he, he was very uh, children and all very hungry so he said what to do how to uh, how to survive now so he went and uh, for begging he got some uh, flour he brought and he uh, wife made four chapatis one one he gave to uh, children and one uh, for husband and wife suddenly one uh, dog came who was very very hungry so uh, king gave this his chapati to the dog then the wife thought when my husband is not eating he also he she also gave then children also gave like that again they went to the village to village and then finally they reached to the kashi those days 
you can give your punya and get the money so he, uh, king uh, king thought uh, i have done lot of punya when you, i was in the kingdom so let me uh, uh, take some money from from my uh, my punya so he put uh, in balance he put his punya all the punya whatever he has done uh, for the people uh, at that time in when he was in the uh, king but uh, that to, that uh, balance was not going up so he, that person said recently if you have done any punya you please uh, put that punya he said i i i don't have anything now so what i well, nothing i did only one dog came i gave one chapati he said put that punya as soon as he put that punya that uh, that punya immediately the, the balance uh, uh, got uplifted and he got the money so this what punya what you have with that if you help others that consider as a punya so said give love to everybody and serve serve swami satyanand ji and swami chidanand ji maharaj his chief disciple uh, when they were in the ashram once swami ji called to one uh, old fellow who was uh, leprosy fellow he was having lot of wound here there that uh, swami shivanand ji said to swami satya uh, satyanand satyam and uh, chidanand ji maharaj you to look after this person uh, whatever he uh, he 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 do he say but you have to serve him he used to spit on them that a leprosy fellow when they were cleaning the wounds he used to spit and he used to abuse bad words he used to tell but swami satyanand ji and swami chidanand ji maharaj uh, did the seva for him to, to serve him so like that serving is very important not uh, our own people but people do, you don't know also so swami satyanand ji swami shivanand ji said by by giving love and serve you can purify yourself and then you can meditate and then you should be very good to others and uh, you used to know swami shivanand ji was very very polite very very kind though he was a doctor but he never asked a glass of water from his servant so whatever you learn in this samadhi pada or in in this uh, sadhana pada or in patanjali yoga sutra use it as a practical use it as a practical not just to know theoretically but we must use it as a practical one thing swami ji taught us for chitta vritti nirodha that is karma yoga so you uh, what in in our worldly life what we do we how we do the work uh, if we have any benefit out of it we do the work for others otherwise we don't pay any attention not everybody but mostly because we, we mostly we we are a little selfish so swami what swami uh, satyanand ji and swami shivanand ji taught us that you do karma yoga it means selfless service even if you are in the society you can do lot of seva uh, to others without getting any benefit name or fame also nothing you should not uh, expect anything from uh, from anybody and do seva so that is the main main thing which we learn from our guru swami satyananda and shivananda that by karma yoga you can purify your mind and by giving and swami sat shivana uh, swami satyanand ji has started in rikhya a very remote place uh, uh, shivanand ashram and there he uh, two 2000 people 2000 children every day they are feeding and that village is totally changed by swami ji's help so uh, swami shivan uh, swami satyanand ji is also following and now give love serve and and doing good for the society there in all that villages are changed uh, villages are totally changed there so once if you get chance you must go there and see what is happening uh, there by gurudev swami satyanand so uh, i don't want to take more time uh, with uh, from uh, from uh, bal murli ji is waiting for <laughs> uh for uh, for your uh, samadhi pada and this uh, course so aryam balamurli now you can start aryam aryam samadhi aryam samadhi
No, something is not like you can take time. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you can Thank start. Hari Om Swami. Thank you for the uh, introductory session and uh, a nice experience chat, Swami. Hari Om. So we talk, uh, start the session. Hari Om all. So we will start today uh, the Samadhi Pada. Uh, so we'll, we are going to cover the essence of Samadhi Pada. So because uh, this is uh, around uh, 18 to 20 hour session, only Samadhi Pada alone, when we get into Yoga Sutra, we are trying to get that in uh, 60 to 90 minutes time. So if it goes little over uh, by 60 minutes, so please uh, bear with us. Now we'll start this session. Thank you. Is my uh, screen visible? Yes, sir. Please mute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. So, why we need to study Yoga Sutras? Because uh, we have problem and we have suffering. If uh, we don't have any problem or uh, there is no suffering, nobody will go and uh, read any text if you are so happy every moment. So we don't need to seek anything higher. There's a lot of situation in life, for example, losing a job, missing a flight or anything, but uh, it ends up in suffering. These are problems. It ends in suffering, but not everyone suffers for that. So now who is the person who creates the suffering? Suffering is caused by mind. If we get the suffering, what is the way to come out? We should uh, learn how to solve the problem and we should equip ourselves so that I can address the problem. So, but again, the problem, suffering, all created by mind because somebody can be happy. Somebody losing their job, still they go fine, but somebody losing the job commits suicide. So, but the, the situation or circumstances are same, but the consequences are totally different. So uh, it's like a famous phrase, like pain is inevitable, but suffering is option. Suffering is left to us, whether we suffer or not, it is uh, based on our mind and understanding, the spiritual maturity. That is pain you cannot avoid. So there are a few good sayings, like Buddha says, rule your mind or it will rule you. The mind should be a servant to me. I should not be a servant to mind. If the mind is the cause of all our suffering, then it can also be the cure, right? So uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra talks about mind, gives solution for uh, more or less uh, for uh, every person. So mind is a boon or curse. If you think uh, you know, internally, is it a boon, it's a gift or it's a curse? In both ways, because we experience pain and pleasure. When pleasure comes, we say the mind is fantastic. When the pain comes, we say, no, no, the mind is cursed. I don't want this mind. So, but most of the time, the reality is the most of the time, the mind gives suffering. So we are dealing, going to deal with Yoga Sutras. What it deals with? Yoga Sutra deals com with uh, complete psychology of the mind, complete mechanics of the mind, understanding the nature and functions of the mind and the ways to control and gain mastery over the mind. We are going to gain mastery. By gaining mastery, we can gain control over the mind. And go beyond the mind and attain self-realization, the mukti or moksha. That's the uh, purpose or the goal of Yoga Sutra. So before you are like getting into that, many people do not know there are how many padas, why they are related. Padas means chapters, those who are new to Yoga Sutra. How it is, uh, how to relate it. I don't understand this for four types or uh, that kind of thing. We'll just see with an analogy. This is a temple. So how many steps are here? Two entrance, one entrance here, other entrance here. When you get through the entrance, you see the God. When you see the God, what happens? Let's assume we get more power. Your prayers are answered. You are getting more powers. That's near here. And if you don't use the power, 
you submit the power to the God, then you attain complete freedom. Okay, just remember the analogy. Now we move to the these two steps are one is samadhi pada, other is sadhana pada. And when you go through samadhi and sadhana pada, you will attain vibhutis. Vibhutis mean power. You attain siddhis. You can fly in the air, walk on water. So those kind of siddhis. If you cross that siddhis, then you attain something called kaivalyam or moksha or mukti. Now this is just an analogy because if you take samadhi pada, samadhi pada starts with what is yoga and it with nirbija samadhi. That means mukti or moksha. So in a way, uh, some commentators used to say samadhi pada was the original yoga sutra from A to Z. Other padas were developed later. This is some of the commentators' view. So I just put an analogy to just remember. Otherwise, samadhi pada has its own start to end. But sadhana pada, uh, it starts and ends with uh, uh, dharana. And uh, vibhuti pada takes care of antaranga sadhana and powers. Kaivalya pada deals with all important concepts in all the padas. So this is just an uh, overview. Keep it in mind. Now we have uh, four padas and totally 195 or 196 sutras based on different tradition. Samadhi pada is for people who relatively have a stable mind. If you ask them to go on to do asana, they will do asana. Sit and meditate, they will try. Keep their self calm. Sadhana pada is for people who relatively have agitated or uh, disturbed mind. So who, who wants action? They cannot sit at one place. They need action. So for them, it is sadhana pada. Again, we discussed vibhuti pada is about the powers gained by doing regular yogic sadhana. Kaivalya pada deals with important concepts of all the three padas and talks more about the liberation. Now, we have a six months course, five to six months course uh, going to start from January 21st, where uh, we normally take 18 hour session for samadhi pada alone, 18 hours. It's around uh, five to six weeks will be over. Then sadhana pada alone is 24 hours and vibhuti pada eight hours and kaivalya pada 10 hours. So what we are going to do today, this 18 hour session, we are going to limit it by between 60 to 90 minutes. So we discuss the essence. The detail, uh, we cannot go so much in detail because it takes a lot of time. This is the flowchart which we have forwarded in the group uh, today, a few hours back. We'll be uh, again circulating uh, today after the program. So just running through the flowchart, if you say the first four sutras are kind of introduction. The yoga, now yoga begins. Now second sutra talks about definition. We are going to see each and everything. everything. Third and fourth about what happens if you are in the state of yoga? And what happens if you are not in the state of yoga? Then something called vrittis. These are called activities of the mind. What are the five activities? There are five activities of the mind. What are five activities? The mind can go undergo. These five activities are mentioned here. We will go through in detail after the flowchart. Now, okay, the mind has five activities. How to overcome these activities? Or how to control? Now, I want to be pleasant. But mind, mind is thinking something else, which happened many years back, I suffer. Or something happened today morning, when I think about it, I suffer. So mind is working beyond my control. How to master the activities of the mind? Now, these are the tools given, tools to overcome vrittis. Vrittis means activities of the mind. There are two uh, paths are given. One is a path of devotion. So how to attain path of devotion mentioned in this uh, blue color and uh, path of practice detachment. We will see what is detachment. There is a wrong uh, notion about it. We will see what is that and practice. What is a regular practice? People say, right, you do regular yoga every day. Every day you do yoga. So what is that? And uh, these two talks about 17 and 18 talks about the samadhis. We are going to see that also. When you do all these practice, you encounter obstacles. Tomorrow morning, I need to do four o'clock, do uh, need to uh, do yoga or five o'clock. What the mind will say? No, no, no. You postpone one more day. Can I make it at 5.30? The alarm comes, we snooze the alarm. So a lot of obstacles, self-created obstacles, also the external obstacles. These are discussed here, 30 and 31. These two sutras, how to overcome it. 
the tools patanjali has given a lot of tools to overcome these obstacles there are around eight tools he has mentioned now when you use the tools overcome the obstacles you enter the state of samadhi then various types of samadhis are mentioned here now the last thing is nirbija samadhi which is the final dissolution this is the uh, flow chart we will again come uh, back to this flow chart if time permits now we will get back to the session you can note down your uh, doubts anything you have so we will discuss uh, during end of the session we'll keep 10 15 minutes so that we can continue with the flow otherwise we may not be able to cover it hope uh, it's okay to all of us now we start with the first four sutras the first sutra says now the yoga begins the second sutra defines about the yoga what is yoga the definition is mentioned okay third uh, seeker will ask okay you are telling about yoga what will happen if i do yoga the says what will happen if you if you are not in the state of yoga if you don't do yoga what will happen this is the four connection this is how the flow goes we are going to see as if uh, a guru and disciple talks a master and disciple talks a master is going to answer the disciple question now i think this question is asked by uh, this disciple uh, i know this question will be uh, from every one of us i'll read the question master how to come out of all the problems in life and be happy i tried everything but i am unable to find any answer can you please explain and give me a permanent solution so that i can live happily ever after and get complete freedom from all my suffering is it not a one question we want to ask to to god also if god comes this is a very logical question there are few catches in the question what are the catches all the problems you know the intelligent seeker he don't want to solve just his financial problem or just his emotional problem or a relationship problem he want to solve all the problem then how the solution should be a permanent solution no temporary if you ask 1 crore rupee you may get 1 crore tomorrow who knows you may require another 10 crore also so solution permanent solution so this is the state of mind one should have if you want to read yoga sutra because this is a longing of a true seeker who wants to come out of all the limitation and go beyond so master what he says okay so you tried everything right okay let me tell you about yoga or now i will talk about yoga this is the first sutra we start with this kind of background now what will uh, the first sutra starts now i will explain you the commandments of yoga or the now yoga begins this is the beginning the first sutra what will be the next thing yes master please tell me about yoga i never heard this word the disciple asked what is yoga you said you want to tell me about yoga what is yoga the master says yoga is nothing but uh which will remove all your suffering it will help you to master your mind you can control your mind you can master your activities because all your suffering is because of your mind so this sutra is a definition gives a definition of yoga and how to control the mind so if you come into flow chart these are the now yoga begins definition of yoga this is about the first two sutras now next question what will be asked if you are a seeker what will you ask i want to come out uh, means you are telling about yoga and you said defined yoga okay if i don't do yoga what will happen or the next question will be if i do yoga what will happen so the first question is if i do yoga or if i master my mind you said you can master your mind if i master my mind what will happen to me or what is uh, what happens if i am in the state of yoga so what master says if you master your mind you will remain in your original nature how many of us are in original nature in a day without anger without negative emotion without uh, depression without too much thinking just be calm how many how many of you are how many minutes in a day are we in uh, in our at least calm state very rare right the moment you see some whatsapp messages you read the newspaper you go out you keep on boiling right we are not calm so he says 
if you master the mind or if you do yoga if you are in the state of yoga you will remain in your original nature what is that original nature we'll keep that open because the original me what is original me it's a big question we will see answering in the later session second thing is if i do not do yoga if i don't control my mind what happens then the master says if you don't control your mind you will be carried away by your thoughts and you will behave as your thoughts behave right if i am attached to something if i don't control that attachment if i am attached to sweet okay i don't have control to my mind the moment i see the sweet my mind goes behind the sweet i don't have any control so i am not in my original form who is controlling me the attachments are controlling me or i have hate on someone now when i see that person i hate see now i am not in my original nature that hatred the dvesha controls me so i am not in my original form so guru says if you don't do yoga if you are not in a yogic state then you will not be in your original form this is about these two sutras to understand little more we have five activities of the mind which we are going to see in next sutra let's assume you are this person who wears the red shirt you have five friends because mind is having five different kinds of activity which we are going to see these are you can make them as friends they are not your enemies because they you need them for your survival suppose you they are your friends no problem if they pull you in all the direction if five people pulls you in all the direction will you go where you want to go you cannot go right somebody pulls you now if you do yoga you can make them to do whatever you want and you see this person joyfully going because you see these friends they are away you you control them when you control them you can joyfully walk which will be the path let it be the materialistic world let it be the spiritual path it doesn't matter if you control them then you can walk and reach wherever you want to reach so the fourth thing is now yoga begins definition what happens if you are in state of yoga and what happens if you are not in the state of yoga so uh, now we are going to see the activities because what the last sutra says if you the five activities it talks about the activities of the mind so we need to see what are the activities right so the 5 to 11 the next uh, six uh, sutra talks about activities of the mind so what will be the question what are the activities of the mind master can you please explain me the master says the activities of the mind are five folds five different types five kinds it can be painful or non painful what your mind gives your mind gives pain pleasure right it can be painful or non painful all the things happening in the mind can be painful or non then he names about what are the five activities he says the five activities are right knowledge wrong knowledge imagination sleep and memory he explain each in every sutra now we are in uh, modern times with uh, no so much advanced technology now this seems to be like uh, thousands and thousands of years old maybe 3000 4000 or more than that can we say anything beyond this five activities of the mind your mind can gather right knowledge is that true i can understand or i can get right knowledge i can get wrong knowledge also this mind can imagine it can fantasize fantasize things it can sleep and it can store information if you take any activity what we do you will include that activity in any of this five there is nothing no nothing called sixth activity the mind can do is it true for normal people now the mind and brain let's assume as of now the mind and brain are same because mind is everywhere mind is a much bigger uh, uh, concept let's understand can our brain do anything more than this you will put everything in this one now to put it in the flow chart we have seen first four and this up to 
we are not going to see what is uh, right knowledge what is wrong knowledge or uh, what is uh, imagination sleep or something this will take little more time conceptually let's understand these are the five activities Oh, okay, I got five activities. What will be the next question of our seeker? Master, how to control these activities? You said these are vrittis or activities of the mind. And how to control these activities? That will be the next question, right? Somebody is pulling and I want to go beyond their pulling or I want to control them so that I will go walk at ease, my life to be at ease. What are the ways? So the first tool he starts talking about Abhyasam and Vairagyam. Abhyasam means practice, Vairagyam means detachment. We will see what is that. The next uh, five sutras talks about practice and detachment. The first sutra says practice and detachment will lead you to yoga. Then what is practice given by the next sutra? Then 14th sutra says how to do the practice. The 15th says, what is the lower vairagyam or lower detachment? The 16th says, what is higher detachment? You can see all these things. Now, oh. what is practice? Now, master, how to overcome these thoughts or control the activities of the mind? He says, the vrittis, the activities can be overcome by constant practice and detachment, which will lead you to yoga. So what is practice here? If you take a sport, a football or a cricket, practice means we know it. You need to do master the activity of hitting the ball. If you master the activity of hitting the ball through bat, we say it is cricket. By legs, it is football. So whichever be the game, I need to do that activity again and again, find, keep on improving. This is practice, which you will accept. How come detachment? If I get detached in the game, can I win the game? What is mean by detachment here? Detachments, no, I'm, I'm not going to involve, I'm going to keep quiet, make this to happen, no. Here detachment means get detached from the deviation. You are doing some sadhana, you are going for a practice, lot of disturbance will come, right? Suppose tomorrow morning you need to go for a practice, for a cricket practice at 6 o'clock. What your mind say? Just sleep for one hour. Or your friend will say, don't go to the practice, come, we will we'll do something else. We play something or we go for a trip outside. These are the disturbances or deviation. Now get detached with this deviation. That is Vairagya, not detachment from the game. When you do a involve in a game, when you play a game, involvement is necessary, right? Without involvement, there is no game. So uh, what is practice? Practice is the correct effort required to move toward, reach and maintain the state of yoga. I need to move towards the goal, reach the goal and maintain or even go beyond further. How to understand it? Suppose you are a cricket player. Okay. Now what is uh, your aim? You need to move towards hitting 100. Is that true? Every uh, uh, batsman wants to hit 100. You reach, move towards 100, reach 100. Maintain above 100, don't get out. This is not the uh, right uh, spirit of a, a perfect batsman. Not after 100, just try to hit more and get out. No, that's not the uh, aim. He will try, but that's not the aim. So you maintain above 100, something like this. You move towards your goal, maybe mukti or moksha, whichever it is, reach the goal and maintain the state of goal or maintain that state so that you go beyond. This is mean by practice. So the disciple comes in uh, after a few days. He says, Master, I tried uh, some practice. Nothing is working. How to do the correct practice, Master? He has forgot to ask how to do the correct practice. Now, next question he asks, Master, how to do the correct practice? The Master says, you can see here the yellow highlighted one. The practice is that which you, you should follow for a long time without interruptions and with a quality of positive attitude and eagerness. That means what? You have to practice the nets, right? No match for next one week. You will keep quiet. You want to become a, a big cricketer. You will go in the nets and practice, right? If you go into the nets, how do you do the practice? Practice in the net for a long time without interruption. 
Linda with positive attitude, your own willingness. Nobody is compelling you, right? You are going and practice the nets. Nobody is compelling you because you love to do it. You need to keep the practice. So similarly, how to do the practice? How to do yoga? Not one month, not 40 days, not three months. You have to do every day. How long? Till the life is here. You can do only one day, only today, right? Only you do today. There is nothing tomorrow, nor by yesterday you anyway you can't do. That only today, only once, something like that. I'm talking about asana pranayama, not in terms of yoga. Yoga means every day you need to be there. So you need to do practice for long hours without interruption, positive attitude and willingness. Okay, what does it mean detachment? There are two kinds of detachment. One is lower detachment, higher detachment. What is lower detachment? Now you are a cricketer. Okay? You have to be detached with all these things, right? The junk foods, cinema, any other entertainment, laziness, whatever it is. Why, why these are all enemies? Because these will pull you down. It will not allow you to do your practice. So if you keep a distance between these objects and you, this is called lower vairagyam. This is called detachment. Get detached from the disturbances. For a batsman, a cricketer, a sports person, these are the disturbances, right? Can you spend three hours uh, you know, every day going for a cinema or weekly once, twice, make himself lazy? He needs to be fit. So this is completely process of buddhi. Your, your intellect should, should come and do. Basically, it says you go beyond likes and dislikes. You have to prepare for exam. You will uh, put your kind of sadhana, right? You will go beyond likes and dislikes, at least for that period. Now, this is lower vairagyam. So all the vairagyam or detachment, what we know means, what we follow in life, these things only, right? Many people would have left many habits. Somebody coffee, somebody tea, smoking, alcohol, whichever it is, maybe cinema. All these we think it is higher. No, these things are lower detachment. What is higher detachment? If this is lower, what is what else is higher? Now, you see here, lower is you get detached. Your mind is detached from all these deviation, including the junk food and all kind of habits. Is it true? I keep long distance between me and these distraction. Then what is uh, higher? Detachment. What is the distance? You keep distance from your mind and you. All the desires of the mind. You keep long distance between the desires of the mind and you. That means what? You have to keep the much, much, much higher goal and get detached from all desires of the mind. Is it easy? How to get detached from even a food? I'm suffering how to leave or reduce the quantity of food. That itself I'm not able to do. How you are talking about detaching from the mind? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. The solutions are given by Patanjali. Now, to summarize this, we have seen here in 13, 14, 15, and 16, the left is about the practice, what is practice and how to do the practice, right is detachment or vairagyam, what is the lower detachment, upper vairagyam, and what is the higher detachment, para vairagyam. Now, what happens if I do? Next question is what? The disciple asks, Master, what happens if I attain? Para and apara vairagya. Suppose I get detached from all the things and also detachment from the mind. What will happen, master? The master says, you will enter the state of samadhi. Samadhi? It's a new term. So can we understand what is dharana, what is dhyana, and what is samadhi? Somebody don't know yoga sutra, don't know these terms, no problem. We will see with the, a practical analogy because these are normally misunderstood terms. Dharana, dhyana, samadhi. What is that? We all go to the movies, right? We have gone, gone to the movies. Now we are all going to see an analogy by going to a movie. Now, the moment you enter a theater, what will you do normally? You buy a popcorn or you chat with your friends. Let's assume all of us are going. What we'll do the moment we sit, we start chatting. And we can, we'll also watch the screen. Maybe the movie has not started. Some advertisement they are giving. So uh, they are putting playing. I am watching the advertisement. That means watching the screen. 
I am also talking. That means three things are there. What are the three things? I am there. The screen is there. The disturbance is there. Is that right? What is the disturbance? I'm talking. That is a disturbance, right? Somebody is talking to me. That is a disturbance. There are three things up there. Now, when the movie starts, what happens? No talking, right? A very interesting movie. Uh, maybe like uh, Pongal, we are going. The new release movie. No talking. Absolute involvement. Now, one person goes out here. What is that? Who is that goes out? The disturbance goes out. Who? Two people are there. I am there. The screen is there. The movie is on. I am there. The movie is there. The three things are reduced to two things. Is that clear? Okay, now some climax is coming or very important scene is coming. Now, who is there here? Only one. Who is that? Even I am not there. If I am there, will I cry? I am totally filled up by the character. Suppose the hero, the hero comes inside me. Since the hero is crying, I am crying here. If without ashaming, without any shame of uh, you know, crying outside, though I know I am sitting in the theater with so much people, but I am full of emotion. I became the hero. So now the only the scene or the character is there inside me, even, even I am absent. This is what we do. If you go for a good movie, these three stages will cross, right? Now we will see about what is Dharana Dhyana Sama. This is called Dharana. The first thing, you are focusing on an object. Meditation means what? You are focusing on an object and keeping the object every moment, trying to keep it every moment by closing your eyes, you are meditating. When you are meditating, you get some disturbance. I start meditating on my object. I get what happened yesterday, what is going to happen tomorrow. My mind goes in all direction. This is okay. This is dharana. This you need to cross. This is the first stage. Who are there here? I am there. The object of meditation is there. The disturbance is there. This is dharana. What is dhyana? When you do dharana continuously, you mastered dharana, then naturally the meditation or dhyana will happen. In dhyana, who are there? Only I am there, object is there. There is no disturbance. When you do dhyana continuously, it will take you to samadhi. As of now, you assume samadhi means the highest stage of meditation. Because if you go in detail, we are going to see something in detail. But to, to at present, let's assume samadhi means the highest stage of meditation. Samadhi means what? Only that image is there. I am meditating, meditating on an object. Only that object is there. I am not there. This is samadhi. So what happens in samadhi? Uh, everybody has, so now can you see my pen? I have my pen, pen with me. If I see this pen closer, 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 if I observe, what will I get? Can someone unmute and answer? If I see the pen very closer, without any disturbance, what I will get? Headache. Okay. Maybe uh, you will get headache. That's also good. What else? Pen will disappear. Black screen. Screen. Black. See? Okay. I will become the pen. Yeah. I think every answer is right. Normally, when I see a pen, I can see, okay, this is uh, this color and uh, this is a ball pen and there is uh, something uh, written here. And when I see closely, I will understand this pen closely, right? Then I can open, I can see. If I spend some five, 10 minutes, if, if, you, if you are given the 10 minutes time to this pen, you can open, observe everything, right? That means what? If you focus on this pen, you will understand this pen fully. So what is the purpose of Samadhi? If you do dharana, dhyana and samadhi on any particular object, you are meditating on your God, Ishtadevata, or your Guru or anything. If you meditate, you will understand that completely. This is the result of purpose or the consequence of dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Whichever you do on dharana, dhyana, samadhi, you will have complete understanding of that object. Now, one more uh, analogy to see. Now, the tap water, the tap water, the water is not flowing uniformly, right? It flows with disturbance. The air is going disturbing. This is can be 
analogy for dharana. This is a flow of oil or honey. No disturbance, right? When the flow happens continuously, it happens. We don't know whether it's flowing or not. Like that, it will see. Now, this is dhyana because there is no disturbance. Samadhi means merging one. The object has become you or you are filled with the object. Samadhi is one. This is just to have segregation in mind so that our understanding can be a little better. Now, there are different types of Samadhi thought. If we take Sutra 17 and 18, we have seen up to 16. The 17th and 18th Sutra talks about different types of Samadhi. So, we will see the broader category. Can you see and tell me what is this person, this the picture and this picture difference? These two pictures are yogis meditating. What is the difference? Is meditating on an object. First example. This picture, the first picture, the yogi is meditating on an object. The second picture, yogi is meditating without an object. Now, this is the essence of these two samadhis called Sampragnata Samadhi or Sabija Samadhi and Asampragnata Samadhi. There are two classifications. What is that? Sampragnata Samadhi and Asampragnata Samadhi. Sampragnata, other name is Sabija. Sabija means Bija means seed. That means what? Seed means some object. You should need, you need some object for meditating. This is called Sampragnata or Sabija Samadhi. You don't need any object for meditation, which is called Asampragnata Samadhi. So under Sampragnata, we'll see Sabija, what all things are there? We have four Samadhis. Vitarka, Vichara, Ananda, Asmitaru. So what is that? Vitarka means the first stage. Suppose you are getting a car, new car. Okay, you want to understand the car fully. What is the first thing you'll do? You are given a new whatever BMW, Audi, whichever name. Okay, new car is delivered. What do you think? Oh, let me go and see what is there. You want to understand the car. The first understanding is you will open the door and sit in the seat and see how the steering is, where is the accelerator, where is the brake, and how things you feel. This is a gross understanding. Is that right? Now, the gross understanding is called Vitarka, the first stage of Samadhi. You, you know, you don't need to remember the word. You assume this is the first stage of Samadhi. Okay? Vitarka, that means the gross understanding. Now, Vichara means subtle understanding. That means what? You open the bonnet, you see what engine capacity it is and other, uh, what are the components inside the car. You go for subtler understanding. That is called Vichara, the stage two of Samadhi. If you understand these two, the gross and subtle understanding, what will you get? You get ananda, the joy of the bliss. Now that samadhi is called the third samadhi. The fourth is called the one who enjoys the pleasantness. You will enjoy him. Okay, that is called the fourth level. So this is a bigger uh, concept. We need more time I'm just doing an outline. Unfortunately, Yoga Sutra doesn't talk about these two, Ananda and Asmitaru, the, the three and four. The first one and two are dealt in detail because the three and four are the consequences of one and two. If you cross Vitarka and Vichara, you will be carried to Ananda, then Asmitaru, the fourth stage. So what is the first Samadhi? Can we go a little bit and understand? In the first Samadhi, there are two different Samadhis. Savitarka Nirvikarka. The second, another two is there. Savichara Nirvichara. Those who don't want to remember the name, just leave it. We'll see only the concept. So you can see the four types of Samadhi. If you take ice, how will you understand ice? The first, if you see an ice cube, if I ask you to define, uh, sir, can you define this ice cube? What will you say? This is very cold. This is in cuboid, uh, cubical shape. This is so much length, width, and height. You will talk about this is solid. You will define like this is the gross first level of understanding, which is called Savitarka Samadhi. What is Nirvitarka? What is inside ice? It is water. If you melt the ice, it becomes water. Is the quality of water and ice the same? No, right? Both are different. Now, water is subtler form of ice. So you go a little inside, understand the quality of water. 
This is called Nirvi Tarka Samadhi. Savichara Nirvichara. Savichara Nirvichara are beyond the, you go much, much, much subtler level. That means what? Inside water, what do you have? Water vapor. Can you see the water vapor? Not possible. So if you start understanding about the water vapor, which is subtler than water, this is called Savichara. Inside the water vapor, what you have? You have atoms and molecules. If you start understanding atoms and molecules, it is called Nirvichara. Is it clear? Ice, water, water vapor, and atomic level. This is how the understanding happens when you get into Samadhi. Suppose uh, if, you, if you meditate on your Rishta Devata or any, uh, any God, if you are closing your eyes and meditate on God, you will first get a gross understanding about the God. Then if you start practicing, practicing, not in few days, it may take many births also. If you start practicing, you will go deeper, 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 deeper till you go the deepest point. So there are four steps it's shown. Like this only, we will get the knowledge and experience in Samadhi. Is that clear? Now what is this other Samadhi? 18. It is called without object. Without object? Why I am doing with object? Why I am doing Samadhi with object? Because I want to focus and understand that object. If you do understand any object, it is anyway connected to the divinity. You will get through the divinity, right? Now here, if you start doing this four Samadhi, with Savitarka, Nirvitarka, Savichara, Nirvichara, after some time, your object will go. You can perform your meditation and be in Samadhi without the object. That is called Asampragnata Samadhi. Oh, in this case, how will I understand? This is at least step by step. Do you know what is intuition? Intuition is considered as the highest knowledge. If you watch, if you watch the cricket, uh, Dhoni used to, uh, know, um, in the final overs, you would have seen, Dhoni used to call, you know, final over, suppose that's a, either it's a win or lose situation. Suppose they have to hit uh, five runs in six balls. You know, many times, uh, you know, Dhoni used to call an unprofessional bowler. You say, you come and ball. There's no logic, right? When you have your ace bowler or a very professional bowler, he can bowl. Why you're asking someone who is a part-time bowler to bowl the last over? That too. You know, that person will bowl, bowl. He will get wicket and he will win the match also. Now, if you ask uh, him, many times he used to say like, it's my intuition. Now, something it, uh, it told me, like you ask him to bowl. Intuition doesn't have happen by thinking. If you think and do, it is not intuition. It happens on its own. Because that few moments, you get connected with the universal intelligence. So, suddenly the answer comes. How uh, the great mathematician Ramanujan used to get all the answers, the intuition. His God will come in the dream and gives you the answer. So I have a question, I have an answer. If you ask me how you arrive it, no. Something like that. Many times he may be knowing because he used to give also. Many times he gives only question and answer, but answer is perfect. So you get something by intuition, which is the highest form of intelligence. That happens in Asampragnata Samadhi. So Asampragnata Samadhi is happened with object. Asampragnata happens without object. So to put it in the flow chart, we have finished up to this. Now there is some sutra talk still about practice and detachment. That means what? Okay, somebody attain uh, samadhi by performing this. The next question is, what about the people born yogis? What about uh, Ramana Maharishi? What about Ramakrishna Paramahamsa? Many, many born yogis are there. What about them? Will be the next question. The sadhaka asks. So, Next four sutra talks about practice and effort of a born yogi. That's about the 19th sutra. 20th says the Shraddha. We'll see what is Shraddha, faith. Okay. And different intensity, different kind of people have different intensity, right? right? So how the practice to be done for them? So it talks about that. We will see now about this. So what practice to be followed by a born yogi? These people are while from birth, they are yogis. 
and patanjali says there is no practice required for a born yogi you you cannot you don't need to go and ask them to do they know their own path they will get their own guru by birth itself they looks like sages they start meditating they will be in samadhi if they close their eyes they will be in samadhi for many hours and many days also you don't need to discipline them they know their path okay then what what other thing to be followed by normal person they are great yogis for normal people what are other things to be followed he says there are four things people has to follow the faith and uh, the virya strength and uh, by if you have faith the strength will come if you have strength then faith and strength memory you will have a profound memory and uh, you will get into samadhi these are very important faith is very important please uh, google and find out what is the difference between a belief a trust and a faith we always interchange things and understand just google and see very interesting concept belief faith belief trust and faith so faith is uh, ultimate belief that means every atom inside me believes this is this is this my if i if i have faith on my guru and god usually it happens with guru and god that means what whatever my guru says i will follow no doubts so this is kind of this is called as faith so please uh, search it's a very um, uh, you get a different kind of perception if you get belief trust and faith so the next question is if i do practice regularly when will i reach master you said shraddha the faith you said detachment abhyasam when will i reach he says if you if your intensity is more you will reach fast if your intensity is less you will reach later then he says uh, sometimes i am with intensity more intensity master sometimes you know i am not intensity is low that means like sometimes i am doing yoga ma practice and sometimes i am missing something like that then do i have any uh, um, uh, path will i reach the goal then he says there are three different kind of people slow intensity medium intensity and high intensity so if there are 10 kilometers somebody has to reach the time varies right the walking person may take some 2 hours the jogging person may take 1 hour a fast running person may do it in half an hour time or less than that so he says if your intensity is fast you will reach very fast your time taken is less that's why all the masters if you are in the path of yoga they try to do a fast forward so you know people uh, who are in yoga you get more problem because fast forwarding you just they will finish this uh, janmas karma so if you do fast then you cover up more distance so there are three kind of people we may be any one of them but if you start walking at least definitely there is sure you will reach the goal maybe little more time but for sure you will reach the goal so if you finish uh, put the flow chart now this flow chart is more or less fill now we go to the second concept the concept is about devotion what is devotion before devotion we should know what is attachment and love right can someone define in one line what is attachment what is love the yeah, devotion is like love what is attachment what is love conditional and unconditional can be can be taken yes any other definition so that a layman can understand so attachment is i want somebody to make me happy this is attachment i want my husband to make me happy my wife to make me happy my kids to make me happy my parents to make me happy i want to extract something i am empty and i want i am just pulling things from everyone i need from everyone something to be filled inside me that means i am concerned about i will not say i am concerned i expect happiness from others this is attachment what is love i will make somebody happy a giving kind of mentality this is love so this is unconditional i don't need anything somebody is i know uh, in the some accident happened somebody is there in the blood just you go and do whatever at least you call the ambulance and go you don't expect so you do without expectation is love 
you do with expectation, expecting something back is attachment. Now the devotion comes when you are filled with love, overflow with love. Now this is not the quality of everyone, right? Everyone has devotion, but to some extent. So in Ramayana great... also, uh, where uh, Sita goes with Rama becomes as an, uh, I mean, partially we can say as an attachment, uh, like a devotion to her for husband, to, to Seva. Whereas uh, Urmilai has actually stayed back and giving her sacrifice for love for her husband, taking care of her in-law. So that that is also a difference between attachment and love. Sure, sure. So the devotion is something, something other is more important to me. I am not important. A devotee for a devotee, who is important? His or her God is important. My guru is important. Krishna is important. Shiva is important. I am not important. So the I, the ego or I become very, very small. That happens only for the survival. But all inside me become that God. God or guru or husband or wife or whichever. Now this is kind of, this is called devotion. You devote your life to that. You consider that which is much, much higher. You consider that as much, much higher than you. So Patanjali talks about devotion. He says, now our disciple comes, Master, you told about Abhyasam, Vairagyam, Shraddha, these things, very difficult, Master. Can you tell me some easy solution? The Master says, you try this solution. Can you, if you are a devotee, if you have a devotion is strong, then you surrender yourself to Ishwara. Ishwara means God. What is surrender? Surrendering your action and the benefit of your action. That means the result. You surrender your action and the result of your action to God. This is called Ishwara Pranidhana. Then he says, how to do that? How I will know Ishwara? You said Ishwara, suddenly God. Who is God? Then Patanjali says, next uh, three sutras about the qualities of God. The first quality of the Ishwara, second quality of Ishwara, and third quality of Ishwara. The first quality of Ishwara, he says, the God is one who is free from all impurities. He is free from all the pain, all suffering. He don't need to do any action. He is beyond klesha karma. Klesha means impurity. Karma means action. He doesn't require any action. He is free from all impurities. This is the first quality of God. What is the second quality of God? He is the seed of all knowledge. Without him, nothing moves, right? So he is the seed of all knowledge. Third sutra, he says, he is eternal. He was there. He is here now. He will be there in future. He is the master for all the masters, a guru for all the gurus, teacher for all the teachers. He is always there in the past, present and future. So he says these are the three qualities of God. You need to surrender yourself to this God. That, that's why he is given the qualities of the God. This is about 24, 25, 26. What's the next question? Okay, is that you're talking about God? So what is his name, Master? What God he is? He says, his name is Pranava. So he says, his name is Pranava, Om. Then he says, is it how to, uh, how to pronounce his name? How to utter his name? He said, you need to do Japa. What is Japa? A repetition of mantra is Japa. When you repeat a mantra, it becomes Japa. How to do the Japa? With proper understanding and bhavana. Your attitude, the kind of devotion, right? The kind of attitude, right attitude and right bhavana, you need to do japa. Okay, master, I am doing japa. What will happen to me? That's the next thing. If I utter his name continuously, do japa. What will happen? Your obstacles are removed. Now you are suffering with a lot of obstacles, right? You are unable to be happy, unable to keep your mind under your control. So if you do japa, all your obstacles are over. Now, what is the new term here? Obstacles. Because question, every question moves from unknown to the known. So, obstacles. We ask next question. So, the essence of 27, 28, 29 is the pranava. The pranava mantra is mentioned in 27. Do japa. The, the japa, technique of japa is mentioned in 28. And 29, he says, if you do japa, all the obstacles are removed. Now, there is a new term, obstacle. We finish this flowchart, moving to the obstacles and symptoms. Then the disciple asks, Master, I am uh, unable to do practice or abhyasam vairagyam or get into devotion. What is stopping me? 
Then the master says, the obstacles are stopping you. There are nine obstacles or enemies. What are the nine obstacles? Sickness or illness, dullness, doubt, negligence, laziness, restlessness or overindulgence, wrong perception, lack of perseverance, regression. These are the nine obstacles he points out. Okay, master, I have nine obstacles. How to find out which obstacle I have? Do I have one obstacle or two obstacles or nine obstacles? How to find out? I may have, I may not have obstacle also. How to find out? He says, if you have obstacle, obstacles, then you will have these symptoms. What are the symptoms? You will be always sorrow. You will have negative state of mind. Your body trembling. That means that your body will act on its own. You cannot control. Too much means you can absorb. And your breathing will be disturbed. If you are angry, what is your breathing? How is your breathing? When you have so much anger, the breathing is fast, right? Disturb the breathing. If you sit relaxed, how is your breathing? Very calm and smooth. Now, if breathing goes fast, your mind is agitated. If breath is agitated, the mind is agitated. That means mind as agitated means breath is agitating. Whatever happens to the mind, it comes to the breath, not only to the breath. These are the four symptoms. So how to remember, because these are, these are important sutra. How to remember, if you take a story, uh, like an office goer. He's an office goer. Okay. One day he got illness. He got fever, high fever. So one, uh, what if you get fever, what will happen next? You will feel dull. You will not have a mind to go to the office. So you look dull. So one of your friend is suggesting, you please go to an Ayurvedic doctor. Don't go to a like, uh, no, normal doctor. Ayurveda is very good. Please go to the Ayurveda doctor. But uh, our friend doesn't believe. He said, uh, why should I go? Since my his friend has said, he just decided to go. So he has doubt whether the Ayurveda or Siddha will work or not. But with the doubt, he is going and meeting a doctor. He got medicine, right? Normally, they give kashayam. You take for 40 days. You mix hot water. You take this before food, after food. Our friend became you know, negligent. No, no. He is not taking medicine properly. And he's fairly fighting laziness. A pill means you can have it immediately. Ayurveda, little, you can you need to strive for it to uh, prepare. So he was not taking medicine. When he is not taking medicine, what will happen? He will become restless because the disease is increasing. Now, why is he doing all these things? Because his perception on Ayurveda is wrong. He is thinking, no, this is not the right uh, method of medicine because I always follow allopathy. So his perception is wrong and he don't have perseverance also. You need to wait, right? You need to wait uh, many days for the result if you take Ayurveda or Siddha. But uh, for allopathy, you can take now immediately your fever may come down. They address the symptom. Ayurveda and Siddha address the root. So it takes little time. So our friend, uh, due to lack of perseverance, he do not take. When this happens, what happens finally? He regress. His health worse, uh, worsens and he need to admit it to the ICU. Just a story to remember these nine obstacles. If you remember three, four, it's fine. Otherwise, if you remember nine, that's good. Now, symptoms, dukkha. Dukkha means sorrow or pain or suffering. Daur manashya, the negative emotion, negative feelings. Angame jayatva, trembling of body. You know, when you get so much anger, you see, your voice tremble, your hand tremble. If you have so much pain also, body tremble. Shwasa prashwasa. So your, your inhalation, exhalation, not proper. These are the symptoms. And making sure like you have all these nine obstacles, these symptoms will come. How to overcome the obstacle? Now Patanjali gives fantastic eight tools. Two compulsory tools, six optional tools. Now this can be viewed by different commentators differently. But uh, this is better to understand these two tools, 32 and 33. These two sutras talks about compulsory tool, this you should have. Then this six sutra talks about optional tool. That means you follow any one. That is enough. These two you follow compulsory and these thing you follow any one. We will see what are they. What is the compulsory tool? Choose any one principle in life and live it till the end. It's not good tool. You forget about spirituality. Even for the material well-being, you should have focus, right? 
you should have your goal you should have a goal in your life focus on particular thing so that you move towards it so for a spiritual person yes mukti moksha so that should be you keep one principle anything you keep any one thing or you keep ahimsa you see i am going to follow ahimsa to the best of my abilities i am going to follow satya the truth to the best of my ability you take anything and live to it this is the first two if you take any one thing and live your life to it you will get pleasantness of mind right you get clarity about it if you don't have any goal no clarity always confusion always suffering is it true have some goal now he says next tool is chitta prasadanam have pleasantness of mind so he has also mentioned how to have pleasantness of mind before that we will see why i need should have my mind should be pleasant so let's say like after the class today we are going to have a buffet dinner okay we are going to have go to five, five star hotel going to have a buffet dinner so i joyfully enter the dining table or the buffet place where the food is kept when i am about to eat or take the food in the plate i get a phone call okay something happened somebody close to me they got into an accident for example then what will happen to me to my emotion my face will become like this worry now can i eat the food joyfully i want to move out right something happened to someone i need to go or my mind is not good this phone call came or it may be office call to attend a meeting whichever it is you will lose your peace so the peace is not result of life it is a of life right it is a starting point even to enjoy your dinner or your food you should have peaceful mind right if you are too stressful you don't know what you are eating you may end up eating more or you end up not eating at all even if you eat you don't know what you are eating you cannot enjoy the food if your mind is agitated can you enjoy as simple as the food what we are taking every day no so for every activity to do in life you need to have chitta prasadanam pleasantness of mind the mind to be pleasant now how to keep the mind pleasant padnath is giving few things like he said have friendship with good people good means not the good and bad i want to uh, get into yoga for example or to studying yoga sutra what i should do i should have good sangha group i should belong to a group where people of like minded things are there so friendship with like minded people according to my goal compassion somebody suffer we should not go and say it is your karma somebody suffering it is his karma no he is suffering let's not do that if somebody is suffering we should have compassion if somebody does good thing i am not doing somebody is doing let's appreciate and support him that's the third thing i am going in a bus some accident happened somebody is saving the victim i should be happy and just pray it's good somebody has come you appreciate it and you should have equanimous mind for people who do things against life somebody do something very bad if you are seeing a criminal a drunkard who is a, who has drunk and fall on the street we are cursing right so we we should if we curse and get boil what happens i am getting disturbed have a stable mind when you see something unfair is happening have equanimity in mind so that you can do something better see already there is hell of a problem around us if you become angry what happens you become one more problem right if you have more problem around you that is the moment you should be without any problem if you also become one more problem where is the solution so he says if unfair thing happens if you see something unfair have stable mind equanimity in my things so that you keep your emotion mind uh, strong you can do what you want to do so these are the four points he says to keep the mind pleasantness so what are the optional tools he is optional he is talking about pranayama so uh, he says if you have a uh, single point focus one agenda in life and if you have pleasantness of mind now you do pranayama then our uh, uh, sishya is coming disciple sir pranayama very difficult master my mind is going everywhere when i sit for pranayama just simple nadi shodhana also my mind is going everywhere so can you tell me a little simple solution the guru says okay your mind is going right that means your senses are going 
Now you enquire the role of senses. The where sense is going, from where the senses uh, started going. So what is the role of senses? You enquire. Now our Sishya says, I said pranayama is difficult. You are giving some the very difficult task. Enquiring the senses. Where to enquire, master? Please give me one more simple solution. Then he says, or you meditate upon. You close your eyes. You just uh, in, in between eyebrows. You just uh, visualize a light in, in inside your eyebrows, between your eyebrows, and start meditating. He says, Master, I am not unable to do pranayama, unable to watch my senses. You are giving much higher. Please give me a little simpler. He says, Okay. You be from free from desire and attachment. Is it what desires and attachment? It's very difficult. Then he says, Don't worry. There is some yogi or some person who would have followed like you. He, he was like you and you would have crossed whatever you want to cross. You follow him. That means he says you follow a guru, any guru who was like a, like a normal person like you. He would have born and brought up like you, but you would have attained samadhi or higher stage. You get guidance from him. If you get guidance from him, you can come out of desires, all your desires and attachment. He says... Uh, uh, master, this also seems to be a little difficult. Can you give me one more solution? He says, okay. You are sleep, sleeping every day. You are getting dreams. Sometimes you are not getting dreams. Now inquire, who is there in the dream? Who is not there in the dream? What is dream? What is that uh, trying happening? Which is real? Which is not real? You start inquiring the dream and deep sleep state. After deep sleep, you are so relaxed. You just see who is that so relaxed. What gives you relaxation? Inquire into it. He says, this is a little okay, master. Can you give me a little more easier? He says, I will give the easiest one. Do You do meditation in whatever thing you like. There are not two uh, uh, different schools of thought is there. Now, here you meditate on whichever object you like. Our Swami used to tell a story. I'll just tell you a few lines about a story. A king wants to do meditation. A yogi guides him. A yogi teaches a technique for the king to meditate and the king tries and he is unable to do the meditation because, you know, he is very attached to his bracelet, very costly, lot of you know, pearls, diamonds or that, the bracelet. He always has the bracelet in mind. So he tells the yogi, uh, master, I tried meditating, but you know, I'm not getting that uh, you know, meditating mind. Something is coming. Then yogi asks, what is that uh, something is coming? He says, my bracelet is coming. Then he says, you should have told me, you tomorrow knows you meditate on your bracelet. Then king is so happy because he always thinks about bracelet. Now he can meditate on the bracelet. So it's so beautiful, master. I am okay. I'm very happy. I can meditate. Then the guru says, you meditate on the bracelet and see from where the beauty comes. You are, you are, you are like praising the beauty of the bracelet, right? From where the beauty comes and who is responsible for the beauty like that you start meditating. So anyway, it reaches the creator. So that meditation is this year, Patanjali says, you meditate on whichever object you like. Now there are rules to it. So this is the single line understanding. So this is the second page of the flowchart because that one page is not enough. We discussed about obstacles and symptoms in 30 and 31. 32 to 39, we have seen two compulsory tools and six options. Okay. Now from 40 to 51, Patanjali talks about Samadhi. We have seen already there are some concept about Samadhi. Two sutras, 40 and 41, he talks about the consequence, benefits of Samadhi. What is the benefit? The first thing is experience. How the benefit happens? If you do Samadhi, you will gain mastery and understanding from subtle to gross. You can understand even, you will be capable of understanding even the smallest thing and also the biggest thing. An example is an elephant. An elephant can uproot a tree and it can take one rupee coin from the ground also. Can somebody is unmuted. Can you please mute yourself? So the elephant can do smallest of small thing and biggest of bigger thing. Taking a coin from a ground and also uprooting a tree. This is the first benefit of Samadhi. What is the second thing? The mind becomes a pure crystal. Mind becomes so clear so that you have utmost clarity in life. How is that? What is the clarity? What is the utmost clarity? Now, every one of us are like this crystal with different, different color. Now, 
you can see can you see i am wearing a spectacle okay i have a green glass suppose you have a yellow glass we both are seeing an an object i am saying that object is green what you will say you will say that object is yellow who is right both are wrong that's what the most of the cases happens every one of us has lot of impurities in mind we always see things the way we want to see not the reality if one film goes if you watch uh, we have 100 100 people in the zoom if 100 people watch one movie how many reviews will give reviews how come is possible logically when everyone sees one everybody has say the same thing is everyone telling the same thing no where 100 views comes somebody says this movie is good the songs are good somebody say the songs are bad somebody says fight is good somebody says fight is bad somebody say the story is good somebody say there is no story at all now every one of us has are seeing the world through this colored crystal whichever color i have i will see the world the way it is not the real world but the color world if you do in samadhi if you do that dharana dhyana samadhi you will become a transparent crystal now what transparent crystal will do no color it will show the reality i have a plain glass i will see whatever the reality it is now this is what a yogi gets if a yogi sees you or me what he will say he will say exactly what is your past present and future how we see he is so much clear in his brain he will not be contaminated by the impurities or the coloring he will see the reality this is the second benefit of samadhi or the climax of samadhi if you are in samadhi you will get the utmost clarity about everything whichever thing you see you perceive you will get the reality not your assumption or your prejudice mind so next uh, sutra starts about sabija nirbija samadhi so just to refresh it we have four steps seen in sabija samadhi right sampragnatara sabija step one is savitarka nirvitarka savichara nirvichara leaving that other two ananda asmita or if you leave that we have vitarka and vichara right so in that vitarka savitarka nirvitarka will come vichara savichara nirvichara will come if you put the step it is step by step we understand the object it is sabija samadhi if you meditate on an object you go step by step first gross level understanding then little deeper little deeper then the deepest thing you will understand second is nirbija samadhi we will see what is nirbija samadhi we have seen only asampragnata okay earlier sampragnata is sabija nirbija we have not seen it is the next stage to asampragnata asampragnata samadhi so in 1.4 to the 42nd sutra he talks about the gross understanding of object how you are understanding the object on the outer layer if you see me how will you say how will you define me you will see okay you are wearing a spec and like you know you don't have beard and you are uh, wearing a kavi cloth and there is something behind you and uh, you are talking you are representing yoga sutra you can define right this is a gross understanding if you if i become friend to you for a week then your definition will be changing changing right you will definitely change now that's a little deeper level this is called nirvitarka that means what ice inside the ice there are subtle things called water inside me there are subtle characters which you will understand if you mingle with me for a week time or 10 days time now if you, if i become friend of you for a year now your definition will be totally changing right you know many many things now this is what it calls savichara nirvichara means if uh, you know me for 20 years now i don't need to tell anything to you you know me 100% to the core this is called nirvichara okay this is a four level go from gross to subtle of an object this understanding of happens in these kind of samadhi so now padanjali says in 45th sutra which is highest samadhi here nirvichara is highest right he says nirvichara samadhi will lead you to knowing the subtlest level up to alinga alinga mean seed the top of the samadhi will understand the seed that means if suppose if you are uh, uh, doing research on a banyan tree first you are going outside of the tree going 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 then you will understand up to the seed so this savitarka this uh, sabija samadhi 
leads you to the understanding up to the seed, which is the topmost point, Nirvichara Samadhi. This is the highest point, he says. And next sutra, he says, all these are Sabija Samadhi. These are with object, because there is a seed, right? There is some object, some seed is there. You within, with using that object only, you are meditating. These are Sabija Samadhi. This do not give freedom from life and death. This is only preparatory. This will not give freedom from life and death. No mukti or moksha, but you need to cross this. Then he talks, so you can see here, Bani entry. If you start understanding, you can understand up to the seed. The step one, Savitarka is like a Bani entry. Nirvichara, the last step is like a seed. You understand from the tree to the seed. This kind of understanding will happen in these four states of Samadhi. Then he says, and Nirvichara Samadhi helps one to truly know about himself. When you know the seed, you know about yourself, right? That's the best possible. If you know from a grass tree to the seed of every plant or tree, that, that means what? You mastered everything. So he says the Nirvichara Samadhi, the understanding seed, helps one truly know about himself. My seed I will know. I will start understanding the whole of me. When I have that understanding, then my consciousness is filled with truth and wisdom. Like this glass of water, the water, glass is filled with water. I am totally filled with truth and wisdom. That's why all the yogis becomes. Every cell or molecule or the part of him will be filled with truth and wisdom. Now, this is a new kind of empowerment, right? And I filled with truth. When I have the utmost wisdom, this is a new kind of power I get. It is like as good as standing in a mountain and watching things below. You can see everything now. This, the true knowledge is gained direct without the use of any senses. When you are filled with wisdom, what happens? You don't need any senses to understand. Now I want to see something, I need eyes, right? I want to hear something, I need ears. But yogi at this state, he can see without eyes, he can hear without ears, he can without the use of senses, he can perceive everything and he will go beyond the senses. That's what he says in 14. And that's mean, as good as you are sitting at top of the life, you can perceive everything. Earlier, you were in a small home here. You see, there are a lot of houses. There will be a lot of this town. You are, you are inside a home. You are knowing only little. Now you are in top of the mountain. You can see the whole creation. In 50th, he says, the new power. Now you got the new power, right? Perceiving the entire thing. This new power will wipe out all your karmas and samskaras. You have the old karma, karma samskaras. Everything will vanish. And this one new power will stay with you. Because this is so powerful, it will send all your dirts or impurities out. Now he says, the new power, what you gather, that is also impurity. Now you throw that also. Then you attain a uh, samadhi called Nirbija Samadhi. It is as if we are getting to the top of the mountain asking you to die. When you die, what is the problem you will face? What is the problem you will face when you die? You will hit the earth. right? You will hit the ground. Suppose that is a bottomless pit. There is no bottom. If you ask to die, it is wonderful to die, right? You will be floating always. Something like that. Or it's as good as like this. If you made you king of this country, you are the king. Okay. Now, when you become a king, then nothing stops you, right? You can do whatever you want. Now he says, you became a king in 50th Sutra. You became king. Nobody needs to hear anything. That means uh, uh, yeah, nobody, you don't need anything from, uh, no, anyone depending. If you order, things will happen. But if you throw the power of your the great power of king, what you have, you resign your, uh, you throw away your kingdom, you become like a normal person, consciously throw that power, then you attain something called Moksha Mukti, which is Nirbija Samadhi. Okay, just an analogy. Only this one hour only, we can explain this. This just to inspire, so we can go in detail, or you can go in detail if you go through the story. So with this, we complete the uh, second part of the flow chart. Now, if you go through here, you can understand very clearly. These four sutras talks about the introduction part. You have vrittis here. The, what are the activities? Right knowledge, wrong knowledge, fantasy, sleep, and memory. 
and you get uh, tools to overcome it. What are the tools? You have practice detachment, you have path of devotion, Ishwar Pranidhan, the first quality, second quality, third quality of Ishwara, then Pranava, then how to do Japa, what Japa will do. Now here you get a small introduction about Samadhi. When you cross uh, uh, Vairagyam, two levels of Vairagyam, detachment, lower and higher detachment, you get into Samadhi. What about practice for a born yogi? Other people, it is given here. The Shraddha and other things. Then about the obstacles, the nine uh, obstacles and their symptoms, tools to remove. There are two compulsory tools, six optional tools. If you use these tools and attain Samadhi, what are the consequences? The two result of uh, consequence, then you get entire details about Samadhi leading to Nirvija Samadhi. This is the flowchart we already forwarded, which we will also forward. So, uh, thank you so much. Now uh, it's an open session. So, if you have to, any questions, you can ask the question. Sir, I have one question. Yes, sir. When you were explaining about dhyana, you told it is I and the object with the movie example, right? And again, when you tell about the sabija uh, samadhi, right? When I'm having a seed or again, there's an object and me. So how are these two different? Uh, Some, uh, the sabija, uh, if you take uh, the sabija samadhi, the samadhi happens in four levels. That means dharana, dhyana, and some indhyana object is there, ma'am. You are understanding the object. Still, the object is there last. But how will you enter dharana, dhyana, samadhi is due to these levels. Samadhi is the topmost thing. You enter the samadhi in four different paths. In samadhi, still object is there. Object is not vanished, right? So, so first thing, okay, like savitarka samadhi means what? Cross. You are, you are there. Sub, uh, the, you are filled with the object. Suppose you are meditating on your Guru's feet. Your whole mind is with Guru's feet. Okay, Then you understand one kind of understanding, the gross level of understanding. Then you go deeper, little subtler, little subtler, little subtler. These are some of them. You are not there. Only the object is there. So it continues to exist. Yeah. Till we reach yes. the highest level. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, uh, can you please share the slide which uh, talks about the Nirvichara? The, the person uh, who is uh, jumping on the springboard into the swimming pool, can you just share that slide with some points below that uh, person who is trying to jump from the springboard? I want to share the screen for that. Yeah, share the screen. Because there was something which, was, which flashed and it just went away. Slide, sir? No, not this one. The previous one. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, there, uh, this one? No, this even previous, even previous. Previous this one? Yeah, this one. This is samadhi without any feet. This one uh, was not explained. Actually, asam pragnata we have seen, no, sir, without seed. Huh. When a yogi proceeds asam pragnata samadhi, then it will end in nirvija samadhi. Right? Like in the case of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa or Ramana Maharishi, that is the last janma for them. Why they came? Still, they had little impurity, but in that janma, they lived in asam pragnata samadhi. That means they will not do any practice. That means they know some practice they will do, but uh, they are here to final dissolution. When they live in Asampragnata Samadhi in that Janma, at end of that Janma, if they finish, then they attain Nirbija. They never come back. Their job is over. There is no next birth for them. Okay. So that's what I say, like you jumping. Intuition, they live in, they will not think. You, you, you know, Ramana Maharishi did not think at the, I don't know which age, eight or nine or 10. He never had a second thought. He just left to uh, uh, Trivanamari. Okay. Something like that. By intuition, it is say you go, you do, you don't think and take decision because you are already fulfilled. Well, how will you maintain the body if you're going to do this? Body, they 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 start ignoring after some time. They start ignoring, but they know when the time comes. You know, uh, in a Ramakrishna Paramsa, they say like uh, uh, he always uh, many times he is there in the samadhi for many hours, many days. And uh, he used to be fond of uh, food. So he used to ask uh, Sharala Devi, what's, what's your cooking? What's your cooking? 
So every day, 10 times you will ask, what's, what, what are you thinking? So one day, Sharada, he said, why you are asking? You are addressing your uh, you know, sishyas and coming and asking uh, what you are cooking. He said, that's okay, you tell me. Then one day she said, I am so ashamed. You are such a spiritual, you are like God to people. But you are so attached to eating. And he said, don't worry. The moment, one day, if I don't show the interest on food, then uh, that's all. I, you should know I, I will have only three days left. Oh. Because, because you know, he created karma every day. He is creating 10 times karma so that he can live one more day. One more day. We, oh. we create karma every day. Anyway, the length of life is there. If you don't think about anything, he can be in Samadhi. If he close his eyes and sit, he will leave the body. But he has kept a goal for him. He need to find Vivekananda. He had to do, do many, many things. So he has kept uh, you know, some work for him. But the moment work is over, they don't bother. They just live. And the final moment they know when to come, they just close their eyes and go. So uh, that's uh, kind of how they take care of it. Ramana Maharishi did not take it. I think they operated uh, with this, uh, without any you know, um, uh, medicine or anything, right? No? So he was just conscious when somebody operating on his, you know, uh, some, uh, on the cancer and all. We have heard. So they they know there's a there is a distance between them and body. When mm -hmm. you ask Ramana Maharishi, was telling like, you know, do you know, are you not getting any pain? He said, there is immense pain. I don't know from where they operated. So they said, he said, it's immense pain. Then why you are not uh, feeling? He said, that is to my body, but I don't need to take that as suffering. You know, if, if take uh, even animals, if, uh, if if any animals, if you if some wound uh, something got wounded, it'll first uh, initially it'll it'll uh, give uh, show its suffering for a few minutes. After that, it goes and run it plays. It it will not compare. Oh, my one leg uh, got wounded, but uh, that dog is running fast. He is getting food. I am not getting food. It will not translate. The pain is not translated as suffering. The pain will be there in the body, but that happens unconsciously for animal. But for yogis. Consciously, consciously, they keep uh, uh, no, distance between their uh, pain and suffering. Suffering is to the mind, pain is to the body. If I don't keep the pain to the mind, then I can live blissfully still. Body pain will be there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Excellent. So we have our uh, detailed session coming up uh, from January uh, 21st onwards. If any of you interested, it's a 20-hour session for this uh, Samadhi Pada. We'll be going through in detail and many, many times so that it stays there. Please, uh, any question open. So we have another maybe five, ten minutes. We can say. So my, question, leave, can... my question is on uh, Samyama. So we uh, we saw that Samyama is the combination of uh, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Now, when Dharana leads to Dhyana and Dhyana leads to Samadhi, where is the question of com combining dharana, dhyana, and samadhi to get into samyama? Because when one leads to another, we don't have the other two when we reach samadhi. So help me understand that. Do you meditate, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, with but, any object you keep for meditation? Uh, um, we are into simplified Kundalini yoga. Just, just tell me one object you want to meditate. Uh, yes, sir. I'm into simplified Kundalini yoga. So mm -hmm. we do you visualize some chakras. You visualize or Kundalini visualize. Uh, we, yeah, on the Agna and Durya. Fine. So you are keeping some like something, some object you are meditating. Okay? Yes. Now, what is the process of meditating? When you sit, what, what will, what first thing will happen? Dharana will happen. Yes. Then Dhyana will happen. Yes. Then uh, Samadhi will happen. If, yes. If you meditate, right? Yes. Anyway, if you sit for ultimate thing, these are the three. Without Dharana, you cannot stop. Correct. So what Patanjali said is, it's a word, Samyama coins, a technical word, which is combination of Dharana plus Dhyana plus Samadhi. He cannot say, if you do some, you know, Vibhuti Pada, it has mentioned the powers. If you do Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi on the pit of the throat, you will not yeah. feel the hunger or thirst. Mentioned mm. the Yoga Sutra. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to repeat the dharana, dhyana, samadhi. Use samyama, the word. This is one understanding. Okay. Second okay. understanding is, if you want to do samadhi means, you need to cross dharana, dhyana. Mm -hmm. so samyama means dharana, dhyana, samadhi. This three states, if you cross, what experience you get, that is samyama. Okay. So maybe it's not different. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Right. Thank you so much. Any questions? I have a question on the 
follow that's okay let me fast or we try to use the time whichever is possible Can I ask a question? Please, please, ma'am. Yeah. So the shloka or the sutra which we talked about, pranava, uh, the Om meditation or reciting Om. So uh, eventually, that is also a solution, right? If uh, if we are continuously practicing the Om meditation, will that eventually reach to the nirbija samadhi? Because there also we don't have any object. We are uh, I'm just trying to understand. Will that also be a tool to achieve that? Use as a tool. Because that is a simple thing. Uh, because the other words are all for a common man to practice all this. It requires a lot of perseverance, and we are again coming back to the meditation. So it's very challenging. So that's why. If devotion yeah. is stronger in you, if you are a devotee, you can devote yourself. You are, if you are strong in emotion, in general, everyone has devotion. In general. The females have more percentage of devotion. Right? They can devote to her, to their to her husband, to her kid. A male usually of no, intellect oriented, not necessarily. I'm just telling in general. The emotion is very strong that everyone has, but the strength of emotion is strong with them. It's, you can make use of it. A male can be more emotional also. A male devotee is there. Female devotee is there. A male, uh, no, um, uh, sadaka who is uh, intellectually higher is there. A female sadaka intellectually, you know, higher intellectual is there. That's there. In general, you have to find out which you are good at. Are you intellectually doing things more, more stronger, or devotion factor is more? If your devotion factor is more, yes, Ishwar Panidana is a fantastic tool. That's the shortest way to go. A devotee, you see, now any devotee did asana pranayama. The great devotees, the nine mars, sarvas, or any devotee, they never do asana pranayama. How they get into samadhi? How they attain mukti? It's a pure devotion. That's the shortest path, but devotion cannot be practiced. Can you develop devotion? Can I practice devotion? The moment you practice, that is not devotion. Right? How will you practice devotion? How will you practice love? You cannot practice love. If you are so grateful in what you have received in life, if you are, if you overflow with your gratitude, the devotion comes. So if you are good in that, if you live in humility, if you live in gratitude, Yes, devotion is a path you can choose. Then you can bypass many things. It's like a highway, a toll road. You just zip the traffic and go. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was an excellent session. Thank you. Hello. Namaste, sir. Say, sir. Yes. Can, I, can I speak in Hindi? Uh, I, I cannot understand. Uh, I cannot understand 10, 20. Let me uh, try to understand. Please do. Okay, okay. I would like to know about... Uh, 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 Asmita and Anand. Um, uh, uh, I understand um, by you that is Vitark Vichar, very clear. But uh, Anand and Asmita. Okay, sometime. that two types of Samadhi. Yes. Unfortunately, that is not explained in Yoga Sutra. I will say about what is uh, my understanding. Um, if you cross Vitarka and Vichara, you will get bliss definitely because you understand everything. Suppose you got a car, you know about uh, how to drive, brakes, clutch, everything. You understand about the engine. You know about everything about the car. What will you get when you drive? You are so happy, right? Joyfully you ride because you know everything. All the knowledge. Otherwise, you will think, if suppose puncture happened, what will happen? Some belt in the engine goes, how will I do? If there is a workshop not there, what will you do? You will think about, right? Suppose you are a mechanic or an uh, automobile engineer. You know everything. Then you drive joyfully. This is Ananda. When you start with Vitarka Vichara, the natural state you get into is Ananda. If you get Ananda for, for getting joy, I will not, uh, uh, this Ananda or the deepest meaning, other meaning. If you get joyful, if you are joyful or if you are happy, means you need two things, right? One thing is needed, I am needed. Both should be there, right? How will I get uh, happy and joyful? Then I, I get something, so I am joyful or Again, joyful is a different uh, two words you can say. Let's say I can be so happy if I get anything. I have a car. I'm joyful after Vitarka Vichara and Ananda, I'm happy, but, but I have a car. Now in Asmita, there's a next stage of Ananda where I don't need anything. Even without car, I close my eyes, I'm just be happy. 
something like that analog you don't need anything for asmita i there i is not ego asmita you can have two different thing the real i is the purusha the atma that is also called as i the ego is also called i here the i is purusha that means you dwell in your own self and be happy that's the final stage you are so joyful and blissed out that i asmita that asmita you are standing not the ego thank you sir thank you and next one sir is mahavrata mahavrata so mahavrata is a is a person who follow yama niyama all the time we are going to see you that tomorrow so yama's name is very difficult i am satya aste how to follow very difficult wherever you are whatever work you are doing whichever part of the world you are whatever time you are there whichever the circumstances you follow yama niyama the one who follows in whichever circumstances and whatever you uh, know part of the world or time he lives then that person is called mahavratan the process is called mahavratan that means a great who is a great being who follows yama that's why that sutra is given in between yama and niyama mostly they say that is for yama one of the commentator beautifully says mahavratan is a light this side yama is there this side niyama is there when the light glows you get uh, no the light uh, uh, throw the gets clarity on both the things so he says that's a mahavratam came in has come in between yama and niyama sutra which we will be seeing tomorrow yes thank you sir thank you very much hariyo yes. uh, what is samapati ji uh, madam this is a common question uh, says uh, to my knowledge i have seen the great commentators they say samapati and samadhi are same but i i have heard there is a different view but uh, i have not uh, read that from any uh, good commentators i am not say good uh, commentators so uh, samapati and samadhi both are same because many commentators have said both are same thank you ji hello sir yes madam hello sir yes madam i can hear you yeah namaste sir because of setting i couldn't join Yes, uh, sir uh, in the beginning you told about original nature some chitta vritti nirodha after that you told about or getting into your original nature gives you peace and happiness real happiness so what is original nature because uh, every person is different so uh, the attributes or of the person and all those things doesn't matter uh, or is it a standard word or is a standard thing sir. original nature i couldn't sir. understand because everyone yeah. is different so everyone's original nature could be different or is it same so we'll find out technically from logic we have logical mind we'll find who are you when i say who are you what will you say uh, ask who are you because i yeah, need your original nature no who are your original ideas who are you i am a living being with a human li- human being or living being that's that's the race right human race you belong to human race but who are you somebody you should be different from someone right then who are you can say i'll say general answer i am this body but this body is food right whatever i ate the food became this body i was just 1 feet or less than a feet when i was born now i am 5 feet or 6 feet how 1 feet has become 6 feet because all the food i ate it became the body so i can call body as mine i cannot call body as me is that right it's like i i own the body but i am not the body is that true yes collection of food okay no no i am my mind what is mind mind is the impressions i collected from day one from the society from my parents from my teachers what are all the impressions ideas collected i stored that is what my mind is is that true yes sir if you remove your body and remove your mind what is the inside i you never seen that you never seen body i cannot remove okay. because i need to live so let's keep my body if i remove all that what i gathered then that is the real you how to how to logically comprehend it's difficult all you gathered can be yours but cannot be you right, right man Yes. I but gathered, you gather, uh, I said, gathered. But, okay, sir. I said, I I I uh, had a gathered money and put some ten lakh rupee in my bank. That is mine, but that is not me. Correct, ma'am. 
but sir we gathered through uh, like with time not as a child we didn't gather mm-hmm. anything um, mm-hmm. uh, with time we gathered that thing yeah remove that one then only we'll find who are you right there yeah. is one person inside who gathered all these things right there is somebody who is so powerful who gathered all these things we need to find who is that father we need to remove all the gathering father only meditation what for meditation is you go and see inside you remove all these things first close the eyes get out the external world i want to get the world out then go to your inside world remove one by one one by one that's why we say like there is a technical ankar mauna we have yoga nidra many things what to watch what is going on so that you keep on removing one by one then if you remove all these things finally that that real you will come we call in yoga sutra as purusha which is a atma because in yoga sutra there is no one atma one purusha there is n number of purusha if you have 100 crore people then 100 crore purusha are there that's yoga nidra yes yoga sutra's concept purusha is all uh, is there for every being so if you go inside who i am i will be purusha then my nature is god's nature purusha is this is the part of this seen as god right so that we will see that, that is a real life all other eyes are eyes are i gather outside my character my behavior all this thing gather we can change your character right if we put enough effort we can change your character it's changing last year your character is different this year the character is different after 10 years it will be different keep on changing but if you live without characters without uh, any identity then something real i will come that's why i was uh, identified and uh, seen clearly experienced by the yogis so that's the real life okay sir thank you sir sir uh, when we say that this is my hand this is my leg this uh, then we can question who is that i when i am not the hand when i am not the leg to someone the owner of the hand or like something maybe i maybe the purusha maybe no, we need to ask the question that's a swadhyaya start uh, self questioning self analysis you do keep on doing read the scriptures do chanting do many many things that swadhyaya do swadhyaya that's that comes by answer that's what we used to say in meditation class a gulab jamun is there everybody likes gulab jamun any sweet anybody likes gulab jamun everybody like okay now people say can you define meditation i am going to say we are going to give one gulab jamun okay now i never tasted you are tasting can you please tell me how the gulab jamun tastes can you explain even if you write a thousand page of a book you cannot explain the gulab jamun right true can anyone t- explain uh, and tell me which i have not tasted you are tasting something which i never tasted can you explain in words so that i get the same feeling what you have not possible none of the experience can be translated in the world in the word through the word but if i put one gulab jamun to my mouth i understand the complete understanding comes no words are required you know why gurus are talking so much in one side if you become their disciple they will never talk the transmission of the highest knowledge happens without talking but outside they need to talk that only the, this logic mind will listen i am a normal person i i need more of my gurus speeches listen 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 then only the devotion comes when the devotion comes i become disciple guru will sit in sit in front of me he would do he will transfer in some level some other level that's the experience like you cannot uh, say the in words the experience of your taste you enjoy similarly meditation cannot be defined many things cannot be defined how to uh, define samadhi how to define meditation you cannot define you can talk around it and give you some kind of knowledge the moment you enjoy that's the complete experience then you understand this is again when you get experience you cannot talk it out that's why most of the yogis beings they will not talk out they will say you enquire what ramari ramana marishi says who are, who is that undergoing suffering you t- see who is that i go inside go inside because how can i say it by words it will be wrong if the words if somebody can define it it can be wrong only because it is beyond mind beyond logic Uh, hello sir uh, yes sir since i'm here yes, um i have a very uh, basic question it can be a bit stupid as well sometimes so please forgive me if it's uh, if you feel it's very one silly. of the one of the modern guru used to say the questions cannot be wrong uh, only answers can be wrong <laughs> so every question can uh, be no. a correct question yes sir you haven't heard my question yet that's why <laughs> okay sir uh, okay so in the ashtanga yoga uh, that we follow um, samadhi is the highest level of uh, 
uh, that we can attain. So after Riyama Niyamas and Yoga Pranayam, ultimate aim is to re- reach Samadhi. Uh, when we study about uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutras, the first one seems to be like Samadhi. So is there some, is it like the Patanjali Yoga Sutras come after the Ashtanga Yoga, uh, uh, the eightfold method of the Ashtanga Yoga, or is it is it part of it? Or I'm just trying to place where uh, this fits in now. So we have seen initially like, you know, there is no step. It is not Samadhi Pada is level one. Sadhana Pada is level two. Vibhuti Pada okay, is level three. Okay. It is not that. Now Samadhi okay. Pada by itself, it ends in Nirbija Samadhi. It okay. starts what is yoga ends. That itself gives full thing. That is for a little evolved person. Little spiritually okay. inclined people. Then you can get into Samadhi Pada, follow and you can forget all the three parts. Okay. Now Sadhana Pada is for what people. Now we can come. Forget about our people. In general, we can come. What people do? People, they sit and enjoy and uh, sleep and enjoy at home. They want to go and do action, yeah. right? They want to go mall. They want to go outing. They want to spend outside. They need action. Yeah. Without action, they cannot get that mental peace. Now, Sadhana Pada is for those people who have the, who needs more activity. You cannot ask them to sit. Okay. Okay. So, if you do Sadhana Pada, then there is a Kriya Yoga and Ashtanga Yoga is there. Both are fantastic parts. Okay. Different, okay. different tools. If you're, if you're, if you're okay, something got strike, you, you got clicked in Samadhi Pada, you don't need Sadhana Pada. Okay, okay. Sadhana okay, Pada is considered, okay. Sadhana Pada is considered as a step suitable to all. Okay. okay. If, you're, if you're a hyperactive, if you're a normal person, two different child. Hyperactive child is very difficult to get the work done. So for them, it's True. given like Kriya Yoga or Ashtami Yoga. True. Two different methods. But in both the methods, if you gain power, if you gain the power, uh, the uh, Siddhis, then you will get Vibhuti Pada. Then okay, okay. That's why I, I said show two entrance to a temple. Two entrance to the temple, yes, yes. You can enter yeah. anyway. True. True. I get it. Thank very you. good question, sir. In fact, Vyasa gives very good reason. Why Samadhi has come from Samadhi Pada come? That's a difficult, right? Sadhana Pada, you said it's for uh, more confused people. That should come first. Samadhi Pada should come second. Why that does come first? A very good answer. Yeah, okay. Thank you. If there is any no any more question, we can. Quit. Sir, I have a question. Please, sir, please. Uh, could you please explain more about the intuition you mentioned? Um, intuition is uh, gaining the highest knowledge, the pure knowledge, without using your senses and without any particular process and without thinking about it. We, many times we say, right, my gut feeling, something said I did. Now, what is that something said? You have come across at least once in your life, some gut feeling. You did so with some gut feeling, right, sir? Have you come across it? Yes. Okay. If you, if I ask you to explain, can you logically explain why you take taken that decision? You can never explain. You cannot say because you know logically it is wrong, but some gut feeling said it wanted to do or you did it. You also don't know why, how you came to that, uh, how you took that step because it is illogical that moment. That is intuition. But actually, that is the highest knowledge. You, you, the thinking has not come. But something came to your mind. No, you do this. You go and meet that person. Or uh, you, you do this action. Something. It came It came without thinking. Just that option came. You, you selected that option. That moment. Actually, that uh, shana. Shana is uh, like uh, the smallest unit of time. In that shana, you touched uh, that universal consciousness. And something, something, the connection, it flowed. So you got that solution. That is intuition. In fact, you just listen to the uh, definition of intuition by the, the Western scientists. It's fantastic. They all say it's the highest thing because they made a lot of invention by intuition. They say, not my words, their words. You see what Newton or what uh, you know, other great scientists say. It's all great. Everybody talks about great about intuition, which we have said thousands of years. Is that gut feeling and intuition same? Same, same. You say gut feeling because, you know, the moment you say... You know, that's a nine, they say 90% of, uh, or I know, say many, many times more the brain cells are there in the stomach, in the gut, gut area. You know, when you go to the Ayurveda doctor, they treat your gut only first, stomach. You, you go for any problem, they first treat because this is the second brain. The gut is the second brain. If your gut is not good, your, your emotion will go in different way. More communication happens from gut to brain rather than brain to gut. You know, all the communication gap happens from brain to gut, brain to all the parts. Is that right? 
brain give instruction to all the parts but the communication 90% of communication from the gut is happening to the brain so you know this is called a second brain so we say gut feeling because it does not come from here there is no logical uh, uh, thinking it comes it comes from somewhere so we may point at heart or gut we say it's a gut feeling okay sir uh, thanks a lot sir it's a, it was a wonderful explanation for you so i think the time is up i don't want to take your time please uh, thank you so much for being with us i'm unable to see many people have gone out i'm unable to admit there was in the thing so thank you so much we'll meet tomorrow uh, for the sound hari thank you sir thank you sir, sir. very Good wonderful night. Night. Thank, you. Thank, you, thank you sir thank you so much sir the nice explanation thank you so much sir thank you sir hari thanks a lot sir hari so will we will you be sharing the recording the recording will be shared we'll share it with you thank you so much thank you, thank you. Thank you.